You know who Green is and you want to put us in bed with him. You are kidding, right? Yeah, you're right. We should just deal with nice people. Welcome to another episode of Kill James Bond. I am Alice Caldwell Carly. Cow, fuck, I'll do that yeah, one again. I'm Alice Caldwell Carly. The fuck of that. All right, coming back. In. Yeah, this is Alice Caldwell Carly. Yeah, the cat is really dry. Nah. Hello and welcome to another episode of Kill James Bond. I am Alice Caldwell Kelly. Joining me are Devon and Abigail Thorne. Really, <laughs> I I'm definitely Devin. didn't just fuck up the intro <laughs> to this and like trip over my own name. I had a bit of blood removed today, hey? <laughs> yeah, and, and so introduced myself as Alice Caldwell Kelly. They took it specifically from the tongue. That's Absolutely. where they extracted Absolutely. it. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> but we are we we are gathered here today to inaugurate the second Craig Fingersuck James Bond movie. <laughs> I'm gonna keep calling him this. I'm gonna keep doing it. Um, it's Quantum of Solace, and I I mean in this case, what I kind of had in mind for this episode was we do like a a chill vibes thing, and we just we just have a nice time. Um, oh, calm. Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. We have some like lo-fi chill hop beats that you can bond to <laughs> in the background. Yeah. I'm putting on my colored lights. So I, I can, I can really, <laughs> I can really do it. Ah, it's relaxing. We're here. The last bonus, a little high tempo. Mm -hmm. We're just gonna absolutely, absolutely. And the thing is, I'm missing, a, I'm missing a lot of blood. Therefore, um, we're, we're gonna go sort of uh, into a, a sort of a, a cooler zone. But mm. also missing a lot of blood is Mr. White, the guy who, at the yes. end of Casino Royale, James Bond shot in the leg and then did the, like, burner, burner thing, too. Because it's a direct sequel. It's a direct sequel. like, minutes later. The it only Bond up, like, one. an hour yeah. after Absolutely. the previous one. Absolutely. And so it picks up Quantum of Solace in, uh, sort of, in medias res, as Bond drives the Aston Martin around, I guess, like, Lake Como, or wherever the fuck it's supposed to be. Andrew Cuomo. Yeah, around Lake Andrew Cuomo. And <laughs> with his brother, like Chris Cuomo. And, right. <laughs> and then some guys driving one of the classic evil cars. Uh, a black Alfa Romeo 159. Just a fantastic right, car. Looks pointy. Uh, it's it's like it's one of the spy cars. You know, you can have like a black Citroen DS, you can have like a, a one of the black like Mercedes. Um, sort of like 50s Mercedes, or you can have this. Um, it's a damn shame because gone are the days of the classic henchman car where there's like mm. 10 guys in there oh. piling out, hanging out of the windows. Yes, yes. It, the the days of having so like an air suspension, all black Citroen DS with the yellow headlights on it for some reason, oh. just like sliding perfectly around a dirt road while four guys in jumpsuits lean out of each window. It hits a coin in the road and perfectly explodes. <laughs> like I just this miss is, that shit so much. This is the car from the modern henchman. This this is the mm. car that was on like the cover of Henchman magazine yes. when they like oh, rebranded for digital. Absolutely, like. absolutely. Uh, so th there are guys with guns in there. Henchmen, in fact, uh, they are mm -hmm. aware that Bond has has uh, just shot Mister White, and therefore they are chasing him and shooting at him. And I wrote down here, what if we did a a, a car chase, but it was it was good. For the first time in the franchise, I mean, nice. good is good is is relative. Well, we're um, going to talk about the cinematography of this movie because yeah, it's... I'm I'm going to have to have to activate Devon mode. <laughs> yeah, like, like, I, I also mm, considered it. Yeah, like like a like a tree that has like Dutch elm disease. The the franchise <laughs> has developed what? a case of 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 Paul Greengrass blight. Um, yeah, it had unprotected <laughs> sex unprotected sex with Jason Bourne. Yes. And so okay. We need to Ash talk about back. editing. I really, really want to like this film, but unfortunately the editing and all the action sequences is not bad because we are from the era where, they, where they've invented editing, but there's like a lot of cuts and we're cutting from like very close up on Daniel Craig's eyes to his hand on the gear knob to like a shot of the mirror. And there's like so much, it's all over the place. There's like crash zooms and everything's happening. It's really loud. And I understand why they did this because it's like, 
it's supposed to be like, you know, James Bond doesn't get a wide shot showing all the people chasing him. He mm. just gets little snatches here and there. The idea is that it puts you in the scene. Yeah, it's interiority Unf- of his, like, yeah. desperation and whatever. And but like, Unfortunately, mm. I can't see what the fuck is happening in this film. Yeah, the, what, it what breaks happened? my heart because I really like it, but I can't tell what's going on. What happened was there was this philosophical thing, right? There's this philosophical change that happened in the making of films where they decided that the way to shoot something to suggest speed was to do three cuts a second. So you do, mm. you do like cut, cut, cut. Um, whereas before that, the way you suggested speed was by filming something that was fast. Mm. It just makes me think of Liam Neeson going over a fence. Like, it's all that I think about. There's genuinely a shot in this that is three frames of him shifting gear. Just like, <laughs> dit, 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 and then it cuts again. I'm like, fuck, I... Stop it, please. <laughs> yeah, it's it's sad because it's really good. The music is so good in this film. The way they weave the Bond theme in and out of the original music, but, but it, it it's it's a real shame. It brings down the whole film. Yeah. It, it Give works. Me the back projected car chasing and where yeah. it's like <laughs> jiggling on a green screen. Wonderful. Give me it, that. It works best in this scene. I think. I've found because I think yes. because they want to ease you into it. The cuts aren't mm-hmm. quite as bad here. Right, oh, uh, it God. gets worse as it goes on. But so Bond, Bond is like chased through a quarry. Uh, th- they shoot at him. The cops chase them, and then the 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 guys, the henchmen, shoot the cops. And then Bond escapes into the historic center of Siena in Italy, um, where he just sort of like drives into a convenient tunnel, which leads to an MI6 safe house. He opens yes. the boot. Mister White's in there. He's like, right, get out, and that's the that's the like opening thing. You get the you get the theme song after this. The theme no song, gun barrel yeah. opening. No, no the gun theme barrel. song. By the way, dog shit, banger. atrocious, banger, mm, absolute banger, banger. banger. incredible, <clears throat> banger. I, it starts to lose me in the middle, but I think it's a banger. No, mm. no, I don't agree. Uh, I mean, okay, listen, I it's aged well. I don't think it has. it has. I think that much like um, the the thing in the scene that follows, and also in Casino Royale, where it has parkour. I feel like the White Stripes, I think that was or sick. in this case, Jack White only, and Alicia Keys, um, is like a feature of when this movie was made so much that it dates it. And so. We're going to run into that a lot in the Craig years specifically because mm. there are like. Every, every movie has its own little thing that was just big at the time it was made and now horrendously dates it. Like, yeah, I'm going to go like completely poker. Devon like mode. scuba diving. <laughs> I'm going to go completely Devon mode over the fucking, like, w- yellow filter inspector. Yes. Uh-huh. And, like, Which... maybe maybe the earlier Bond movies have this too and we're just, like, too young to know it. Yeah, because we mm, were alive when this stuff yeah, was popped. So, but yeah. I, I genuinely do feel as if the Craig movies might be a bit more faddish in that way. Uh, they might Maybe. be a little bit mm. more sort of like trend driven. The titles are cool though. They're kind of a little bit of a throwback to the original Brosnan ones because they're like, "Yo, you you heard of titties? You heard of titties, what but if, sand? What if they were made of sand? Yeah, yeah the in, the entire symbolism present in these titles is like, "Yo, what if there was a desert? <laughs> but it was like, that? but it's sexy ladies. Yeah, we're but back yeah. to horny what titles, if women which in the is desert? N- oh. notably the Casino Royale titles were the best ones because they were not horny, but were in fact just an anime opening. Whereas yes, these were right. back to were back to like, oh, have you seen the shape that a woman's back is? Yes. What if no, the villain no from Spider Man Three had mm. like like incredible rack? Though. Absolutely. Oh what if God. Sandman just had like huge honkers? Huge Shit. mummy milkers. But like, mm. yeah. Hang on, we have to stop the podcast for a few minutes. Yeah, in order to like. Fully. Yeah, what absolutely. Pierce, Pierce Brosnan in a cow print bikini, but also he's made of sand. No. Oh man, well, imagine if you titty fucked sand titties. That'd be Ooh. really. Oh. Imagine if you lactated sand. That'd be the worst, wouldn't oh, it? Fuck me. I don't, you went there. You went he there. Has, here's, a, here's a tell when he's losing at poker. He lactates sand. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing Bond's, sinister. Nothing Bond's sinister. Just sitting there, <laughs> Bond's just sitting there like, well, I won't consider myself to be in trouble until I lactate sand. <laughs> <laughs> so you get, get, what? <laughs> so the movie Quantum of Solace. <laughs> the thing is. Which we're definitely talking about the, now, the yes. Fuck, the action scenes are horrendous. But the mm-hmm. the interpersonal, like some of the conversations, are genuinely extremely oh, so good, good and well written. It's almost a good movie. That's the that's the like, worst thing about it. There's a chat between Bond and M here that's particularly good, where 
where M's just like the Americans are upset and he's like well they got their man they're like she's like they got his body and he's like if they wanted his soul they should have made a deal with a priest mm. and I was like lol yeah cool cool mm. it's cool it's James so, Bond so, again yeah so what happens I'm liking is this. Bond, Bond delivers Mr. White to this safe house where they're going to interrogate him and M is there with a with a guy called Mitchell who big character Mitchell by the toys Mitchell remember him from the previous films Mitchell, they set him up it's Mitchell up everybody they say his name five times in this scene and I'm it's like, like a studio it, applause I'm I'm simply saying like Mitchell maybe... walks in like Kramer <laughs> <laughs> Mitchell what's going on in there um so like yeah and if you, if you're not if you're not familiar with some conventions of screenwriting and you're not like an elite viewer like all of us it may have passed you by that the movie wants you to notice this guy Mitchell who's just like M's bodyguard and the second uh, Bond comes in he's like I'm going out to check the perimeter and then I'll come back from having checked the perimeter and she's like thanks Mitchell we the guy we definitely know <laughs> and then he does come back in like Kramer's like alright perimeter's fine and she's like cheers Mitch <laughs> <laughs> Big he's like wearing a red shirt you. Big M uh, um, yeah so of course this guy's obviously a double agent right but they go and they get, they bring him in to interrogate Mr. White. Um, and M that seems so cool. Uh, it, it's it genuinely so just, it, it's sort of a, a Joker moment, right? Because M M tries to like threaten him with torture, and he laughs her off. She goes, "The longer it takes, the more painful we'll make it." <laughs> Fully Joker mode, laughing. Yeah, and he um, has this great bit where he yes. where he's like. Um, oh, you know, we're always looking over our shoulders, saying, "Oh, MI6 and CIA, they're on our tail." And the truth is, you don't know, you don't even know who we are. Like, yeah, you don't absolutely. Know we exist. It's it's great. And like in the, the the real standout bit from this scene, right, is the bit that actually manages to make the idea of Spectre or whatever any kind of like shadowy Spectre. organization terrifying. Is he goes well? The first thing you should know about us. Is we have people everywhere. Isn't that right? Mitchell, my best friend, who then shoots M and frees him, right? Easy. So good. Easy So mode. good. It's g genuinely chills. It's a great line. It's good. Mm hmm. Uh, it's actually good. Like, M even has a line about it later where she's just like, look, people say we have people everywhere yeah. all the time. You don't expect they mean they've got someone literally in the room. <laughs> but yeah. it's true. I mean, secret agencies, they have people hidden all over the place. You, Isn't that you never right? Know. Abigail Thorne. <laughs> You never know which which of your beloved YouTubers and podcasters could secretly be working for the intelligence. Listen, I, listen, I'm just gonna check the perimeter. I'll be right back. <laughs> so it's genuinely. I don't know how much you want to talk about. Or if we can cut this, but it's genuinely so fucking funny to me that they believe that a secret agent has chosen to use the cover of starting a podcast about how much being a spy sucks. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a fun and idea And also, for like, some with, withdrew from a national award because it was sponsored by the security service. So it's all part of the cover. Ah, I don't protest all... too much, I reckon. Ah, she won't <laughs> reply to my tweets. Why <laughs> won't you reply to the tweets? So, at this point, however, having just had a great line, having just had the, we actually mm -hmm. do have people everywhere, Everywhere, tentacles, you know, wheels within wheels thing. Uh, we, we then parkour. The movie then has to suck dog shit again. So Bond <laughs> fucking like chases Mitchell, presumably his best friend. A big deal because everybody's been talking about how cool Mitchell is. <laughs> He's like Mitchell, you betrayed me. I can't believe this. After all the other times you were in all those other movies with me when I was the <laughs> same like guy, taking off a locket with Mitchell's picture. <laughs> <in it>. <laughs> <laughs> The Craig shirt is just Mitchell. No. <laughs> just B Mitchell. Cra thumb yeah. up. Craig and Mitchell, best friends forever. <laughs> He's got like special like shirts fish. made. Yeah. <laughs> Mitchell on a fishing trip. <laughs> Listen, he 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 and Mitchell were going to retire to Jamaica together one day, and now Mitchell has betrayed <laughs> him. Like, fucking, if you'd done it with a character we had ever seen, like, do it with Tanner, right? Like, because Tanner is in this movie. He's in a bunch of other movies as, like, M's guy, right? You hear the name Tanner, you expect, oh, that's the, like, guy who, like, helps Bond. It, yeah, that's the guy it, with the concave axe. It's the guy with yes, Rory Kinnear, the guy with the concave ass from, from years and years, yes. But, like, <laughs> <laughs> if you had just done Tanner, that would be more interesting than, like, 
Mr. I'm going to check the perimeter fucking, like... <laughs> oh, t- iconic lines. Mitchell's most iconic line. I'm oh, going to yes. check the perimeter? God, when he said that, ah. Oh. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't, I don't, I don't want to, like, quotes. talk out of school, but, like, we're giving him the goodnight cross of the Kaufman star <laughs> and yeah. the Kronstein rosette simultaneously. <laughs> I don't know which I don't know which to give up anyway. So, all so sadly posthumous because <laughs> Bond chases Mitchell yes. and this is all very stylishly intercut with footage of a horse race and it's like, yeah, and okay, you can't I can't fucking it. see Editing. anything. Half of it's in like it. underground tunnels where it's dark, and then it's intercut with this horse race. But Bond does some like fucking parkour, right? And then at this point, I wrote down Uncharted ass Shen Yun ass China before communism <laughs> ass fight because they both get like knocked through a glass ceiling and then they do some like wire fighting on the end of ropes because I guess that was also a thing at this point. It's kind of fun. It's original. Like it's a physics puzzle. A Nathan Drake was fucking doing this yeah. on like Bond has a gravity 2. gun. Like kind yeah. of funny. I mean, it is kind of funny, but they found a way to like work in a fucking wire fight like. Kind of organically, hmm, it's, uh, in that they just both it. get caught up on wires and start jumping at each other. Like it's, it's. Yeah. I I can't bring myself to hate this. Mm-hmm. Like this this movie in general, I I do actually quite like it. It's pretty forgettable, but I. It's harmless. I, I I have a theory about this movie, which I'll get to as to why it frustrates me so much. But I think for now, mm-hmm. all I'll say is that I think it's that it's almost a good movie. It's like. 70% yeah, of the way to being an unironically yeah. like good film start to finish. It comes really, it comes bloody close. Yes. I just want to see a re-edit. I want to see somebody take all the footage they shot and just re-edit it. No changes to the script. You want to see the just... Frank Darabont cut of yeah. Quantum of I just, Solace. I just want to see anything. I want to see what the events of this I film. Want to see Quantum of Solace. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, instead of like seeing like slices of it. So mm. but Bond, Bond is unfortunately forced to kill his best friend of many years, oh! Mitchell. I don't know if Mi- I don't even know if Mitchell's his first name or his his surname. It it could be both. It could be Mitchell Mitchell. He's got he's just got one. He just got the one. He's a it's a mononym. Yeah. Um, yeah. He's Brazilian. Mm, so, <laughs> Mitchellino. Um. So yeah, but Bond Bond kills Mitchell, and M gives him shit about it because at this point Mr. White has escaped, and M's uh, M embarks on a course that she spends the rest of this movie doing, where she's like. Oh, you do kill a lot of people, James. It's very inconvenient for me. Mm. Yeah. And it's like, come on. A movie ago that was table stakes, that you were, like, using him as a blunt instrument and stuff. You can't now be like, listen, stop killing so many people. Uh, Every single movie, M, like, rolls a dice to decide what her thing is going to be for the movie. And this movie, she's like, you do kill a lot, don't you, James? Mm, it's really quite true. inconvenient. <laughs> <laughs> Last so, one, it was, you do kill a lot, James. Hell yeah. So, <laughs> so they have to investigate Mitchell's betrayal, which means we have to go to another beloved uh, franchise location, Mitchell's flat, where we've spent many happy hours. <laughs> Um, set uh, is just iconic. Relaxing, <laughs> relaxing, watching the Mitchell. The thing about look every out. time you go to Mitchell's flat, it's a little different every time. Mm. Which I think is very interesting. Look. There is there is one thing that I noticed here, which is very funny, which is that um, at, at, so so like M's M's in Mitchell's flat, right, with all of her bodyguards. Um, yeah. But when when Bond walks in, he walks past a guy who looks almost exactly like himself. The guy on the door, if you go back and I saved a screenshot of this, the guy he walks past on the door looks like a face apt Daniel Craig. It's very entertaining. I presume that's because that's that must just be his stunt double. It's just and a they yassified just, they, Daniel Craig. <laughs> they didn't want to. They didn't like pay an extra because they've that's already got the stunt fuck, double. That's probably true. Anyway, so happens all the time. Yeah. Mm. So, so so M is upset. M, yeah, M's upset. She's complaining. It's intercut with this like uh, flashback montage set to. I can't mm-hmm. see me loving nobody but you. Yeah, but all like, of the times that like Bond, Bond and, and Mitchell, Mitchell played swing like each other around in a racquetball on the beach. Kind of um, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. 
Oh my god, great ref. It's a little, it's a little deep cut, but I thought I'd, I thought I'd go there. So, Very yeah. nice. Um, mm-hmm. So she, she goes through and she shows, she finds all of the like Christmas presents that she that he had, you know. Yeah, that was actually from a, her. that was yeah, that's really in the film letters, and it was a really nice detail. Like she, she, she's like, look, there's two Christmas presents in this flat that I gave Mitchell for Christmas, and I can't believe really he betrayed me. Uh, it's good. I miss and him I've so much. About this, but like, I really like the idea of MI6 being a really wholesome office, just like in yeah. general. Like they're all going, they're all like going around signing the Get Well Soon card for 009 again. <laughs> But okay. also overlooking They've all of Bond's sexual assault and money mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, there's like a secret Santa every year. It's just a lovely little... <laughs> yeah, Avi, I think your thing was uh, Q Branch getting Bond a Toblerone for Christmas. Yes. <laughs> it's like, what does it do? It, it's got new guy in it. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's just a little gift from you all of us to say, it Merry Christmas. Scared. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But like you do, you do get a sense of how little M knows this guy because she's like, "Look, I got him. I got him this nice ashtray." And Bond goes, mm. well, "I don't think he smoked." So <laughs> that's a nice detail. Yeah, yeah that is it's, fun. It's, it's, a, it's a nice touch. But they they try to figure out why he he did this, and the answer turns out to be that he had no money. Um, <laughs> I mean, and then in the most tenuous next location in the whole fucking you get the franchise. pronunciation yeah. of this one? Uh, no. It, okay, well, he go, the guy says, Porto Prince Haiti. Mm. Yeah. And I'm right. like, all right. Okay, man. Okay, so 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 we go back to MI6, and have you ever seen the movie Iron Man with all the holographic tech? Well, that's we've got a sci-fi Iron Man table. Also, Rory Kinnear is here, one of Britain's best theatre actors. He's and the most Tana. concave asses. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's <laughs> a, a, that's a reference to the time on Trash Future when we watched the, the show Years and Years, and there's one scene where he has his ass out, and he has a remarkably strangely shaped ass. Um, um so anyway, the, the MI6 boffins are like, a few years ago, we introduced tagged bills into Le Chiffre's money lending operation. Yeah, it's so um, some fucking of them, tenuous. Some it's of like... them were in uh, Mitchell's wallet. He yeah. kept spending them at the strip club that time him and Bond went. Mm-hmm. Um, but also, a bunch of other ones have just been paid into a so bank account what, in what Haiti. Does fucking have to... Did you just remember like, even... you had these because of this? Like, yeah. M undercuts it, even in the scene, where she's just like, well, that was ages ago, I might even have yeah. one in my wallet. It's like, so fucking tenuous that it's like, ah, oh, he didn't have any money. You know what else is in money? These tags that we introduced. Mm. Uh, yeah, they were just deposited by a guy called Mr. Surname. Do not get attached. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Slate. In Mr. Porto Slate. Pr- in Porto Prince Aiti. Um, sure, man. It, it, I don't, okay. I, I don't know. Off you go, Bond. So, so yes, Bond goes to Aiti. After three weeks of compassionate leave to mourn Mitchell. (laughs) He's still... (laughs) He's sadder about that than he is about his fucking girlfriend. Absolutely. (laughs) Every single, like, Daniel Craig Vespa scene replaced (laughs) with Mitchell. (laughs) I thought it was weird how every time he was in Casino Royale, Mitchell is like, I have a terrible secret, James. (laughs) And James always misunderstands him. In, in no time to die, it opens with fucking Bond going to Mitchell's <laughs> <race. laughs> uh, Let's keep this going for five movies. I think we can gin this up. So, uh, so, so, so Bond goes to Slate's hotel room and yeah. Slate attacks him. Yes, yeah, this is the thing, right? But Bond tries to do some spying, but because it's Craig Bond, this does not last for ten seconds before the guy <laughs> comes at him with a knife. We get the, like, Heavily cut fight scene. Um, I had to rewind twice to figure out if Bond killed him and like how. Yeah, Bond. Bond. Yeah, Bond how the fuck did he kill him? Bond you tell me? him up by like stabbing him with a shard of broken glass from a window he pushed him through. Is that what it was? Oh, okay. oh, right. I thought he injected him with a syringe. No, he hits him with the the the. It's one of two times in this movie someone gets stabbed with a shard of broken glass. Um, he gets stabbed with a shard of broken glass, and then Bond sort of like philosophically like looks around really while he's holding does. this guy down to restrain him. him just and, consider. And, yeah, the, the anyone effect... else notice... hmm. Sorry, anyone else notice how fucking like the all the ADR fighting sounds like it was recorded inside a tin can? Like it's the most <laughs> echoey <laughs> shit no. I've ever yeah, heard. Well, I mean, listen, it's still an improvement but from... Anyway, that happens! <laughs> 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 It's still an improvement on On Her Majesty's Secret Service where they had that fight in the room full of cowbells. 
wow, this was good. That was good. <laughs> I've, I've, I've noticed a lot of the like orthodox Bond Twitter accounts are now pretending that On Her Majesty's Secret Service is good. And for that, I'd like not, to say not, that was not us. Correct. We did that. <laughs> yeah, we did. We, we started that. We, yeah, we invented this. Everybody is following us. And also, they're still wrong because it's they, they don't hate us, they don't they, they don't like us, it, for it. The, they don't like it for the right reasons. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, so, so Bond steals um, steals this guy's jacket. Yeah, and, and goes and like down the, to the, the front desk well, and she says, "Oh, there's a, a briefcase here for you. And yeah. do you want to pick it up?" And he's like, "Yeah, I'll pick that up now. Thanks." The accidental spying. I'm I'm yeah. just I'm still not over the way he's like. So this guy's bleeding out, right? And he's like trying to staunch his neck wound. And Bond's like slapping his hand away and holding him down. And the effect is meant to be like you know Bond is a nihilist now. Bond feels nothing. He he kills emotionlessly. But the effect is much to consider. Like <laughs> he's, he's holding he's, him down and like philosophically this looking MF around looking the room, contemplative. considering. Yeah. <laughs> I, I gotta say I really liked Daniel mm. Craig's performances. It was I, good. I think it's it good. was good. Like, no, no slander against Daniel Craig, right? It, like, no. good actor. He's just sure. given a lot of bad movies to do. Sure. It's the reason why I liked him in Knives Out so much, just because he was finally given a fun script and he's having a time of his life. That you can it's, see it's, how much he hates. Sorry, go ahead. It, it's hard to play like that. Bond is pretending not to feel anything, but really does deeply feel it. When there's no lines, mm, and yeah. like that's that's Craig's decision to play it that way. I, I really respect his his decision <laughs> to play this. As um, as we get closer yeah, to to movies with actors that are still working, you will notice that <laughs> Abigail so Thorne uh, becomes more yeah, and more and, enthusiastic. And, and about them. Also, actors who we may have some connection with. <laughs> yeah, we're not going to be doing Girl with Dragon Tattoo. <laughs> Stop asking. Yeah, also we could, like, we should not be slacking off Daniel Craig for reasons that I can't say at this point. <laughs> no, I, I mean I have no interest in slacking off Daniel no, Craig. No, no, he's he's good. I hope he forgives me for calling him Craig. Finn. Suck, although I'm referring to the character there. Um, yeah. I'll ask him. <laughs> <laughs> <Just please don't. laughs> yeah, get him to get him to listen to the podcast. Fuck it, get him to come get on. Him on. Um, no, that would be horrendous. God, that would be I horrendous. mean, there's, there's one bond we should have on. It's Lazenby. Uh, that I've that been much trying is to clear. get him, but he's God, he's old. Mm. <laughs> he keeps posting selfies where he's like been given a product to hold up, and my oh, god, he's man. dying. Uh, well, anyway, so Bond, oh, we get him. Bond Bond leaves the hotel with this case that he's got by accident, um, and is picked up in a in a tiny little city car by a beautiful woman, Camille, mm. Um, mm. who thinks yeah. that he is Mister Slate, and she has arranged a meeting with him. Um, and so Bond just kind of like bluffs his way through this, not knowing anything. Like he's choosing sort of like default conversation options in an <laughs> RPG here. Oh, he's completely like, like middle of the wheel shit. Absolutely, absolutely. So she's like, uh, you know, uh, well, how much money do you want? He goes, ah, make me an offer. I, I definitely know who I'm supposed to be. I haven't been like inveigled into this in the last minute. And then. When but also, like he's mm. like kind of flirting with her a little bit, and she's yeah. kind of flirting back. It's it's, it's a nice little scene. It is, um, fun. but then she says, "Oh, I right, open up the briefcase," and he opens it up, and it's a big, uh, big <laughs> picture of her and a gun. <laughs> Why would you do it like, that way? Huh? Looks like someone wants to kill you, and she <laughs> yes. immediately tries to shoot. Him. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Why would you arrange your like contract killer this way? Like yeah. so fun. Like you have she... to get in the car with her. And be like. Yep, mm -hmm. that's her. Also, also there's a guy on a bike that, yeah, chasing them. Yeah, they're being them. followed by a guy on a bike, and that's his like, friend of yours, and he's like, I don't have any friends, and then she accelerates. So he, he opens up the briefcase, it's got a big picture of her and a gun, and he goes, damn, yeah. someone's trying to kill you. And she <laughs> to Not me, though. Head, yeah. Rightfully. Yes. <laughs> damn, that's crazy. I don't know who this <laughs> is for. This isn't my briefcase. <laughs> he immediately gets like pushed out of the car, and the guy who is tailing them comes up next to him and goes, you were supposed to shoot her. And he goes, yeah. I missed. <laughs> and then takes the bike off him. Great. Perfect. <laughs> also, really also adding to the big counter that I have in my head of number of times Bond has removed Moved a guy from a motorcycle by just like throwing them off of it. Uh, yeah, it's he in, just like it's in the double digits now. And it's fucking yeah. flips. Yeah, absolutely. It's quite good. So um, yes, so Camille yeah. escapes, and the, she escapes to the Euro Trash oh. Zone. 
there is a man here with the worst haircut of all time. <laughs> Would you like to know that man's name? It's never stated, but it is in the. Oh, uh, I know the his name, but please God say it. <laughs> his name is Elvis. And That's he is fucking right. And he is Swiss. He's wearing little fucking like Matrix glasses. He has a bowl cut, and he's just there hanging out. He's our chief henchman. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and we also meet our villain, Dominic Green. Dominic Green, Matthew Amalric. Um, who... Who's Camille's boyfriend yeah. and hired the assassin to kill her. Yes, because he is very Both jealous. Of which she knows. And, and very paranoid. Yeah, she she tries to like brazen it out by being like, well, if I if I did betray you, would I come back here? And he just hits her with a bizarre line reading where he just goes, Please don't talk to me like I'm stupid. Great. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Sure. Um, I should point out, Bond has like been to the front gate, given the guy his business card, and asked Camille to call him, and then is now sat on the opposite pier, on this bike, fucking loitering looking at them. And then, Also, the thing spy. about James Bond listeners is that he is white. Yes, that's true. <laughs> that is true. So, and Stands he, uh, out in Haiti. Yeah, mm -hmm. it really does. He really does. Yeah, on a motorbike, just looking like, like a white side of beef. Looking normal as hell. Uh, but then, very thankfully for, very helpfully for Bond, right? Um, much like sort of summer school, everybody decides, you know, we can have plot outside today. So then, <laughs> like, <laughs> the, they, they have, they have a warehouse. They have like, it's not fancy or anything, but it's indoors. And Bond mm. has basically no way of eavesdropping. But instead, he, like, uh, Dominic Green just decides to sort of like threaten Camille and expound a bit about his backstory, about his like jealousy and violence towards women. Um, and then just go, yeah, listen, I know you're only with me to get to this other guy, General Medrano, who was the oh, deposed God. dictator of Bolivia. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And there he or, and, he, and he's here tonight. To <laughs> yeah, so this, this movie has the balls, much like in the previous one where it implied that Spectre had an advanced knowledge of 9-11, this movie has the absolute balls to say that Spectre facilitated the ousting of Haitian leader yes. Aristide. Yes. Like, <laughs> Jean-Bertrand Aristide was like deposed <laughs> by Spectre in this. Spectre, they did this. And, uh, in, in real life, sorry. he was deposed in 2004 for the second time. Uh, Question mark by the CIA, possibly. Mm -hmm. But like the thing is, I'm right? Go ahead and say definitely. It wasn't my um, department. I wasn't involved in that particular one. There's, there's, mm. there's like two. <laughs> we have people everywhere. Um, w w there's. Yeah, Abby doesn't I'm, talk about it. She was involved in the Bolivian coup like a few years ago. I, I, I'm in two it's minds about point. this line, right? Because on the one hand, I, I do kind of almost like the idea that like, oh, hey, these are bad guys. Like, Green explicitly says the reason why they did the coup was because he wanted to raise the minimum wage and that wasn't acceptable to corporations, so the corporations went to Spectre and Spectre had him deposed. I like that. I don't hate this. Like, again, it comes mm, yeah. really close to being a good movie yeah. with things to say. On the other hand, um, I feel as if this is the same impulse that if you remember all the way back to Dr. No, right after the fish window, there's a painting mm. on an easel there. Uh, that they just walked past, unremarked upon. And it's a painting that was very recently stolen before the movie came out. And they added it to that set in order to suggest that, ah, oh, what if what if Dr. No was the guy who stole it? And to me, I feel as if this is a very similar thing of just, like, googling Haiti coup and going, ah, see, we're, we're topical now, why not just throw that one in? Just a yeah. thing that happened recently, like while they were mm. making the movie. It's, it could have very easily done a fictional. Kind of, it could have been San Monique again. But so General Medrano is the deposed dictator of Bolivia, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, he comes to Green and is like, "Yo, I want to hire Spectre to give me back my country." And Green is like, "Okay, cool. In exchange, we want this worthless strip of desert in Bolivia." Yes. And General Medrano is like, "There's no oil there. Everyone's looked." And Green's like, "Well, you know." Yeah. And the important uh, thing maybe is, maybe we'll get yeah. lucky. Also, if you want to, you could like rape my girlfriend. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Green. Green. <laughs> green goes like, um, uh, like 
the important thing is, and this is like a fairy tale ass condition, we have to have whatever we find in this desert. Mm -hmm. And he says that very meaningfully. Incidentally, <laughs> would you like to rape and murder my girlfriend? Because mm -hmm. that's what uh, he he like hands Camille over to her. Um, and he's like, yeah. oh, hey, I know her family, uh, which we will find out more about later. Um, mm. And it's sort of like the the sociopathic version of the like walking threesome nod uh, in fucking yeah, View right. to a Kill because mm. he's he's like have fun, drop her over the side when you're done, and it's mm. like mm, mm. I, I like I like Green as a villain. I remember at the time people were like, oh, he's a bit wet, but I think he's actually good. It's a good performance. Not wet. He should have been wetter. Me wet Blofeld, <laughs> wet Le Chiffre. Um This guy is this guy dry or like, no? He's dry. He, dry he, he is dry Le Chiffre. Desert. He's desert uh, Le Chiffre. He's sand. He's sand Blofeld. There is a nice moment where um a few minutes earlier where they're standing on the edge of the dock and he's talking to his girlfriend. And then Green looks over the dock and we see what they're seeing and there's just like a corpse who's been like tied to a block and drowned yeah, right beneath his feet. Uh, block, yeah. It's really nice. Which it's is really the, nice. The geologist that she was attempting to see before, who His name is literally out Mr. Slate. Slate. Yeah, mm -hmm. Mr. No Slate. No one took determinism the strikes again. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, I, I'm in two minds about about Green as a villain because, like, I I don't know. I believe so. I think. All right. I think what has happened here is that mm. she she was going to meet a geologist who was then killed by by Green and. Replaced Mr. Slate with was Mr. Planted Slate there to kill her. Do you think Mr. Craig Slate was like, that "Oh, that's guy. quite ironic"? Then that I've, I'm, yeah. I've yeah. killed it. Anyway, I'm in two matter, minds but... about Dominic Green because, like, on the one hand, Matthew Maurick's very talented and he sells it quite well, and he has some interesting dimensions to him. On the other, this is a sort of recurring theme with the now with the Craig movies, where it's like instead of you know, sort of like evil mastermind, it's Craig pursues sweating Euro trash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he can't stop doing this. <laughs> yeah, it's just like, it's a European man from like a, you know, a country that is not England who is just like sweating profusely more as things go on. Well, at least he's mm. not a Canadian man in yellow face. You That's, know. That, yeah. that, is, that is true. That is true. So yeah, but Medrano is getting like guidoed up by, by Spectre. That is the implication. Um, and he gets on his little boat to go back to his yacht with Camille, hmm. uh, and Bond steals a boat and like crashes into it just as she's about to get revenge and shoot Madrano. And he like bundles her off the boat and then takes her away. There's a, mm -hmm. a boat chase, which sadly also has the editing disease. Yeah, sucks. I can't. Bond does something with a hook and... Causes a boat know. to flip over. I, I don't know what I, it is. I don't know what he does. He, 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 wish he, does, I knew what he, does, he does like boat jutsu. Uh, yeah. Not not clear we get, on this. We get a, a, a scene where fucking M and Tana, I think maybe one of her guys, mm -hmm. not Mitchell anymore, sadly, um, are on the mm. phone. He's like, "What about what about Slate?" And he's just like, "Bond says he was a dead end." To which M goes, mm. "I she fucking killed him." Mm. <laughs> Another he one killed him, didn't uh. he? Yeah, you, like Bond medically cannot not kill the guys that M <laughs> desperately wants to question. Absolutely, it's like a it's like a disease of the trigger finger. He has obsessive compulsive disorder, but like for murder. <laughs> so 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 Camille gets knocked unconscious, and Bond just like thoughtlessly hands her off to a guy. Like he parks the boat at a hotel, and then he's like, "Yeah, dude, take care of this. This is my luggage mm -hmm. or whatever." Um. And then calls back into M to try and find out who Dominic Green is and what his deal is. Mm -hmm. He's he's a he's a philanthropist. He's an ecology guy. Mm -hmm. He owns a company called Green Planet, who are buying up worthless strips of desert around the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, like there's a really fun green, bit where awesome where shit. M calls the CIA um, and says, yeah. Do you, are you interested in Dominic Green? Are you keeping an eye on him?" And we we cut to uh, in in a plane. Uh, there's Felix Leiter and his boss, uh, Mr. Beam, and they're like, Greg no, Beam, we... played by Greg David Beam. Harbour. David no, Harbour rules legend. in this movie. They're like, he is the guy you no heard interest. in the beginning who is like, oh, yeah. we should only deal with nice people. They're like, we've got no interest in Dominic Green, don't worry, we're not keeping an eye on him. And they hang up and Em's like, they're definitely watching him. And then and then Rory Kinnear's like, how do you know? And she says, well, they just transferred me to the section chief of South America. How would they even know to do that if they weren't following Green and knew he was there? Which yeah. is quite cute. <laughs> like, it's, it's nice. They just phone him up like, yo, 
are you interested in green? And they go, definitely no. And she like hangs up and goes, 100% yes. <laughs> and then even better, we see in the next scene, like the green is driving to an airfield and gets on the plane with them. Like they're right about to meet him. It's really, really yes. fun. And so God, what, what, what green Harbor, is man. doing, he's so good, is he gets he gets the Beautiful US mustache in this on movie too. side. He essentially gets their, their blessing for the coup. And the way that he says this, is it's a p absolutely a product of like the pink tide mm. and the war on terror, right? Because he says, Venezuela, Brazil, now Bolivia, with you tied up in the Middle East, South America is falling like dominoes. You don't need another Marxist giving national resources to the people, do you? <laughs> Great, fantastic. Mm. He's, the, the thing is, is he doesn't believe this. Like this is, it's, he's just pitching it well. Yeah. Like this is just, this, that's what I like about Green is that he's kind of unremarkable, but in a way that's on purpose. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's also a massive hypocrite, and like that, yeah. you know, he uses that to his advantage. It doesn't trouble him at all, and that's something that I like because, like, previous Blofelds of various stripes, right? They've certainly lied about things before, but we've we've seldom seen them lie about things so nonchalantly just for convenience's sake. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And we've seldom seen them do it with that sort of ideological framing. There's a bit towards the end of the movie where Green says, listen, we deal with the left, we deal with the right, we do dictators, we do liberators. It's all, you know, it's all gravy to us. I don't give a shit. Um, mm -hmm. Which is great. I like that a lot. Um, so Mate, Green also says, I've, uh, you've got to kill this guy, James Bond. Yes. Lighter. CIA, Felix Leiter is on the yeah. plane and he tries to cover for him because David Harbour shows him the photo and he's like, who is that? And, I don't, uh, and Leiter goes, yeah, I did no idea. I'd never seen him before in my life. Whereupon Beam calls his bluff and says, that, oh, that's James Bond from British, <laughs> British Intelligence. Yeah, again, the, everyone the guy, knows who this guy the, is. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, the guy from the last movie uh, who mm -hmm. you played poker with that one time. Uh, he, you worked he, with him for 40 years. Yeah, do you he, remember he, he, when he, he was five million fucking dollars to buy his, back in? Do you remember he, this? He is yeah. a like, when 4K you lost photo of you, him, and Mitchell on a fishing remember trip he in was Nassau at together. Your <laughs> <laughs> yeah, remember After when he was you your gay? best man? <laughs> <laughs> no, I've never heard of him. <laughs> but I really like Felix in this scene, though. Jeffrey Wright has has like one line in this whole scene, but you can just—he's so good, you can tell he just fucking hates this. He hates that this deal is happening. Yes, yeah, and, yeah. And, and Beam is a very sort of smug, very sarcastic uh, sort of foreign policy pragmatist, and that's where you get mm. the the line that I opened with. My favorite line of the movie is a CIA section chief going with, "You're right, we shouldn't be there with nice people." Yeah. Uh, but the deal is that really there's going to be a coup in Bolivia and the CIA are going to be like, well, we don't know anything about this as long as they get the oil that Green finds. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, Green's like, yes, you can have all of the oil. <laughs> if we like, find any oil, he's rumble, very, still skinned, like a little yeah, twinkle in his eye. He's very careful. Like, if we find any oil, you'll have it all. <laughs> <laughs> but it must be returns <laughs> by midnight. Move it, moving <laughs> closer and closer to Roger Moore voice. Turn there. back into water. Moon, <laughs> <laughs> devil the oil. Ooh, you find it. Little birthday, birthday boy. boy. <laughs> so, <laughs> so Bond, Bond is like following oh. this plane. He knows where it's going. And so both he and Green arrive at Bregenz in Austria um, in order to see my favourite opera, Tosca, uh, mm. which is being staged, uh, I think the actual production is like in Switzerland, it's like staged on a lake, it's a big eye, it's very cool. And clearly, so, like the, the you know, um, uh, location scout had clearly seen this and gone, ah, oh, that'd be fucking cool, let's do that. Uh, which I heartily agree with. So, Bond... Uh, does his best move, which is find a guy, knock that guy unconscious in a bathroom, and lock the bathroom. Um, but he he notices that uh, the guy that he has knocked unconscious was uh, he got a different like sort of pack with the program from everybody else, and his has a little earpiece, and in a thing that has now aged horribly, a little lapel pin that just says Q. I think it's so funny. It's so <laughs> fucking little, funny. Oh, that little it's secret cute. society lapel pin. <laughs> For it to be cute. Oh. It's a little gold, Beautiful. a little tiny gold cue. Um, but it says I meant to be their lapel mic, I guess. Yeah, I yeah. But it is so. also quite cute. Oh, that yeah. does make sense. And so, wow. and so what they're doing is uh, the, the various uh, heads of this secret society, Quantum, or as Matthew O'Malley pronounces it every time, 
Quantum. Um, <laughs> it's Spectre. It's Spectre, but they don't have the rights to say Spectre. Spectre so they call it but they, they eventually were just like, all right, fuck it. We're not going to get the rights for Spectre. It's it's Quantum. It's, it's Quantum. Quantum no. executive yes. for Mounter Intelligence. Mounter <laughs> yeah. Intelligence. Now, yeah. Like now it's intelligence. Revenge. Terrorism lines back up again. Revenge yeah. and, and extortion. That's it. That's mm-hmm. quantum. <laughs> so, 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 so. <laughs> Quash the executive. I'm a member of quantum. <laughs> Quantum? Quantum. Quantum. <laughs> so, so, yes, thank you. I'll have the revenge department. <laughs> <laughs> so what 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 Penguins is doing is uh, <laughs> I really love this podcast. <laughs> it's such the, a nice time. <laughs> they're doing a sort of like a Microsoft Teams meeting, but they're mm-hmm. all in the audience of Tosca while um it's literally during the execution scene. So while Tosca is fucking Belting out uh, the the fucking like thing about dying with honor and shit before he gets fucking shot. Uh, they're trying to like talk into their little lapels over the sound of like concert hall acoustics, which is very funny to me. Mm. Um, I'm sure it sounds real good. Yeah. <laughs> but like, I'm just like dick out. Balls both yeah, firmly on the I table. I like this. Bond has, I like yeah, this it too. To me. So, so Bond is listening in, and he listens in enough to like uh, get the hint of what's going on, which is this it's thing. A secret society. They do change yeah, it. Yeah, they're, they're doing this the thing world. in Bolivia that requires a lot of pipeline. Uh, it's called Project Tierra. Yeah. Um, Green's like, I've been laying so much pipe in Bolivia. Absolutely. Bond's like, oh, Huge right, amount okay. of pipe. Um, I mean, and fair, so. Fair. And so, yeah, there's there's some controversy within at Quantum about whether or not this is like the best priority. Uh, but Green is insistent that like this is this is the resource of the future, right? Um, and so, as such, we gotta this this has to be job number one. And then what Bond does is he kind of beats the grouse, right? He gets on the call and he's like, really "Yo, good. what's up, James Bond here? How's it going?" <laughs> hey, yo, what's up, boys? <laughs> it's your boy. Remember to like and subscribe and hit that notification button. And a uh, bunch of them are just like, are like, oh, time for me to leave. Bond starts like playing drops down his microphone. <laughs> like, <laughs> hey, how you doing? And Whoa, like a bunch God. of them start getting up to leave, and he just takes a photo of each of them. Yeah, <laughs> to it's these other very clever. Point. It's genuinely, it's really good. It's very, it's very clever. Uh, and and mi- Mr. White is there in the audience who figures out that this is happening and just stays completely seated, like takes out his headphone and says to the last next to him, ah, "Some people have no no stomach for opera." Yeah, it's cute. <laughs> it's nice. Like you yeah. can you can just stay completely still and you will not get found out. But James is just mm-hmm. taking pics and shooting it straight to him. It's it's, it's like, beasting. It's fantastic. Um, and so we identify some of these guys. One of them's like a Russian oligarch. One of them's an ex Mossad guy. One of them is the prime minister's very own special advisor, Guy Haynes. Um, mm-hmm. and so. Of course, immediately while all of these guys are leaving, there they, they activate. Okay, you got to kill this guy right now, mode. Um, <laughs> you need to kill this motherfucker right AI now. AI said to hostile. Yes, yeah. And so, <laughs> so the various bodyguards uh, like attempt to intercept Daniel Craig, and we get what I think is a very elegant scene of um, him sort of shooting his way out into cut with um, uh, Scarpia, fucking like menacing Tosca's girlfriend. Um, uh, I'm sure that this scene is great if you know what Tosca is, but my notes just say, "What if your footage of a thing was intercut with footage of another thing?" I mean, it's it, it's not that's as profound cinematography, as it would... Abigail. What if that? <laughs> that's, you know, that's movie. That's it, Kino, baby. It's not what as if, profound as it would suggest, uh, but it's still. I still liked it. I still like this. If, what I if like we the, had a like... sex scene, but instead of showing the sex, like we cut to a flower opening? Yeah, or a train or going, a train into, a going, going into a tunnel. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I love you guys so much. <laughs> oh God, we can't have a meet. <laughs> so, 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 so Bond, Bond then uh, holds up a guard, Metal Gear Solid style. Um, he like puts a gun on a guy, uh, and he's like, "Right, who do you work for?" And the guy tells him to piss off. So Bond drops him off a roof. Um, non fatally, in fact. Yeah, he survives it, but lands on the car of Mr. Green. Yes, and then this is another great part that I really like. And one of the things that also sold Quantum to me is the guy lands on the, the bonnet of Green's car. And Green goes to his bodyguard, Is that one of ours? He says, No. Then why is he looking at me 
and he like hides his face while his bodyguard mm. gets out and shoots him. It's very good. Mm. I like this, this also occasioned a remark from my older brother that I'll never forget when he said, I preferred Connery Bond because he was so cool and I felt like I could never be that. But I feel like I could be Daniel Craig's Bond if I just went to the gym a lot and kicked people. That's, and I was like, yeah, yeah I do that and it, uh, it's not actually that fun. But yeah, <laughs> well, the, th- the crucial thing about Connery no, Bond is that he rules. seems like he's having fun, whereas uh, Craig Bond seems miserable all the time because Daniel Craig yeah. hates the character of James Bond. I don't think he hated it yet in this. No, not, like, yet. I, I, not yet. I, I, I think we're on yeah, the cusp. I think he's still having fun. Yes. Skyfall, yeah, by the time we get to the third one, yeah. Yeah, Skyfall is definitely the movie that, like, afterwards he did an interview where he was like, I'm never doing one of these fucking yeah, movies again. Know. And then I, he did two yeah, more. Yeah, absolutely. Because um, they had to just ply him desperately to yeah, come back. Yeah, because this is a movie about Bond struggling with nihilism, and both Bond and the movie lose. They both get mm. subsumed with their own nihilism. It's a movie about something. Like, that's yeah, why, it, yeah. like, at this point, I'm so used to the long moors, where I keep having nightmares about finding unknown <laughs> war films Ooh. that we just have to keep going on with, Ooh. where it's just a thing happens over and over again, and it's all like, it just keeps echoing past movies back and forth like we an enigma forced machine. an AI this, to watch every Roger Moore film and then have a This is a movie one. that, like, whether or not it pulls it off, at least thinks it has something to say. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Roger Moore in twice is a night to kill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I genuinely Actually, I think I did a tweet along these lines. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're going to have to do a bonus episode. That Roger is Moore twice in is a night Her to Majesty's Kill. kill. <laughs> Her Majesty's never dies again enough. <laughs> yeah, I, I wrote fucking uh, on the James Bond account. I wrote creepy pastor of the KJB podcast <laughs> getting stuck in the more years reviewing a seemingly infinite spate of more Bond films <laughs> that the no man one else has with ever her heard majesty's of. gun <laughs> I quote tweeted that with new episode twice is too few Roger Moore goes to the 1984 Sarajevo Olympics and involves himself in a frankly egregious number of skiing scenes also <laughs> Sheriff J.W. Pepper is there and he's being racist to a different Yugoslav <laughs> ethnic group in every scene moon pussy <laughs> moon pussy <laughs> hell moon yeah pussy. okay <laughs> so make the art, if we make like a kill if a bond style poster for moon pussy <laughs> we will sell that as yes, a fucking poster so good. 100% oh my god it's like a really old <laughs> so, yeah so M M has to like <laughs> M is, M is now mad at Bond because the guy yes. that he dropped off of a roof was a special branch officer. He was Guy Haynes' <laughs> bodyguard. Bond has now killed a cop. Uh, and as such, he has to like come in and be debriefed, and also the Americans want him like off the case. Mm-hmm. Um, and- they cancel all of Bond's credit cards. Yes. And there's a really cute scene where he tries to buy an airline ticket and his card gets declined. And then he like, flirts with the lady and says, you're going to get a phone call in a minute. Could you please tell them I'm going to Cairo? And she's like, of course. He's like, cheers. Nice. <laughs> it's yeah, really- it's nice. I like that. And he like all makes right. it clear in the way he says that, that he's not going to be going to Cairo. And she's yes. like involved in a little bit of a trick. It's nice. Yeah. She likes it. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah. But then he somehow gets to Italy. Not quite sure. Then he teleports Boat, to Italy. Question yeah. mark. Um, and he visits Mathis. You remember our boy Mathis? <laughs> Remember Mathis, mm. who was just not a double agent? That was actually Vesper he was thinking of, and he just yeah, the guy, yeah. the guy he her. had tortured by accident. Um, he rocks up and he's like, "Yo, how you doing?" Sorry about that. Like, yes. Did you get my card? Incidentally, uh, Mathis's girlfriend. Hello, um, but she's <laughs> she's just hanging out in her bikini, and Mathis is like. Well, listen, you did have me tortured. Therefore, why would I help you get a passport and new credit cards and help you get to Bolivia? Um, And she goes, well, listen, they bought you this villa, so you kind of do owe him. Uh, Mm. And this is enough to (laughs) this is enough to sway Mathis. So he get he gets him the thing. To me, that's so fun that like they they were told this guy was a double agent. They like torture him for information. It's clear he isn't, and then they just go, sorry about that, chap. Have a villa. Have a house. Yeah. yeah, that's quite a nice retirement package, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, he's like wearing yeah. a sweater around his neck. He's like having a nice time. But um, he's vibing. Bond, Bond then goes, "Come with me." And Mathis is like, "No." And I wrote down, "Boys trip," because immediately <laughs> Mathis comes with him. Lads on tour. Lads on fucking tour. But, uh, I mean, you gotta get like with 
Previously, Mitchell would have come along on this, but of course, yeah, of yeah, course. it's hard to fill the void with Mitchell. Mm. It's not right with just the two of them. Mm. And we actually even see Bond in the first class cabin of the plane getting rat ass because he's sad about Mitchell. It's the first time we see Bond drunk as opposed to drinking. Yeah, um, yes. Yeah. And it's, I actually genuinely really like this scene. It's, it's, it's like, what is what have you had? To which the bartender reads out again the the Gordon's gin, the extremely the fucking shit. annoying drink order that he has. Yeah, yes. and then he goes, yeah, ten of them. <laughs> <laughs> can't even get fucking Keena Lele anymore. He even, he even like specified, he goes Keena Lele, which is not the move. You, ca- you can't get, <laughs> I'm like, they don't uh-oh. make it anymore. Anyway, so yeah, uh, this is like Bond at his like lowest ebb. And this is, y- yeah. you get a sense of how he's like been sustaining himself p- post like Vespa trauma, which is drinking alone in an entirely gray and darkened room. And it's yeah. just grim. It's grim. It's a really nice, like, really quite touching. Mm. It's the first time in the whole franchise where I've actually, like, you know, I've kind of felt a bit sorry for Bond. Yeah. yeah and I nice. credit, again, to Craig and the writers that this is, like, this so, is good. So, so Bond and Mathis land in, I guess, La Paz, uh, whereupon they are confronted, <sighs> and the movie shits itself once again, by an uh. imperious woman named Fields, whose line is, like... <sighs> And I, d- I did note this down for like future uses. If you attempt to flee, I will arrest you, drop you off in jail, and take you to the plane in chains. Understand? Which is which is very nice, but like her she's... name is Fields. They go, yeah, is that surname or first name? And she's like, it's just Fields. But and in I'm the sub- script, crucially, her name is Strawberry Fields, which is activating a little thing in my like spy trivia lobe because that's also the name of the uh, the CIA sub camp at uh, Guantanamo Bay, or was. I wouldn't know. I've never been there, and anyone who says I have is lying. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very dark internal CIA joke because the mm. Beatles song is "Strawberry Fields Forever," which is the you know implication of you know keeping people in fucking Guantanamo Bay. You'll be there, whatever. Yes. So she she tries to confront Bond. She tries to like turn him around, uh, and Bond just like he has a, a, another charming funny, well-written moment, right? Because the plane doesn't leave until the morning, so he's got to stay overnight. She takes him to, a, at like, a shitty hotel, and he's like, oh, that's a great I don't want to stay here. Uh, th- this, you know, it, it looks terrible. And she's like, but our cover is teachers on sabbatical. And he's like, yeah, I'll fix that. They go to the best hotel in town. He walks up to the desk and goes, we're teachers on sabbatical who have won the lottery. <laughs> the guy goes, congratulations. Perfect. <laughs> it's like, perfect. Nice. It's really good. I hate that this is good. Like, I feel like I'm going soft, but it's just that they've, like, figured out how to make a movie. Well, I, I'm going very hard. Um, Hell yeah, because, baby. Um, <laughs> She's because, a redhead. No, no, no. Not because of that. And um, But because this little sequence where they, like, they go across town and then they change hotels and so on, I know that it's all in service of padding out the runtime on the pussy clock. Mm. Because as soon as they get to the hotel room, (laughs) Craig and Fields shag, and it's three minutes exactly on the pussy clock. But but, but those three minutes, nothing happens. We're just... Do not have sex with this man, and then ah uh, fuck the low key Bond music has begun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Afterwards, she's it's like, like, I'm so know. fucking uh-huh. mad at myself, uh, and like we are also mad at you. Like three minutes, and those scenes with the hotel exist just to pad it out. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, it could. It, they could have cut straight from I'm Strawberry Fields to like yeah. it would have been so, fine. So because like, because we were everyone about as much. Yeah. So, Nudging up the M score. So because yeah, everyone in the world <laughs> knows who James Bond is, he gets invited to, to Dominic Green's party, right? And Dominic Green's party is sort of like his ecological side. And I just want to note here, right? Do you remember the world is not enough? Yeah, I try to forget, but yes. Okay. I'm going to present to you two drops the in, in succession. The man is golden kill. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to present to you two drops. Moon pussy. One, <laughs> one from Moon Pussy and one from Quantum of Solace. And the, I want you to know, both of these films were written by the same people. The bright, starry, oil-driven future of the West. We are, we are in, in a spiral, spiral of environmental, environmental decline. decline. 
We're all looking for the guy who, <laughs> guy did, who this. did this. <laughs> These movies are Impossible nine years know. apart. <laughs> What's happened in the interim? Nine years, and we've gone from the bright, starry, oil-driven future of the West to ecological spiral. Yeah, because nine eleven happened, and everyone was like, "Oh, nothing can ever get better." Now oh, the vibes like, are bad now. Oh well, no! I guess at least it shows that we have shifted the dial on the public discourse about climate change. That's it won't true. do any good yeah, because true. the economy is still not under democratic control. But I mean, at least people are talking about it. Mm -hmm. So, so we'll know nice. why we're dying at least. Yeah. So, so, so Mathis goes to like schmooze with his friends with the and addresses the colonel who is the head of the national police. Uh, meanwhile, Bond immediately ditches Fields to go and see Camille, <laughs> who is also there. Um, yeah, I like that she's like turned up uninvited and is just like crashing Green's party. Yeah, and she's fucking things up for him. He's like, yeah. he's like trying to pitch himself as an as like a an ecologist, and she goes, "Hey, but well, didn't you sell a bunch of logging rights to that land you bought?" And she's uh, and so he tries to kill her. He tries to get rid of her. Right? She she tries to like. Um, diffuse the situation by being like, you wouldn't kill me, I'm just a sexy woman. But uh, it, it does not work, because Damien Green, uh, Dominic Green, does not like women, and he enjoys uh, killing women. So he's about to push her off of a balcony when Bond uh, like rescues her by being like, ah, oh, there you are. Mm -hmm. um, mm. Bond then leaves with Camille, thinking, I will certainly not get owned. He then gets owned. <laughs> He, he makes it. He makes it two streets away before the cops pull him over. And what's, goes, what's so funny is that during this scene, like Strawberry Fields has absolutely no indication that Bond is in danger. She just hasn't seen him for forty-five seconds and is like, <laughs> "Right, I got to check on this dickhead." <laughs> and he yeah, she, is completely in danger when she arrives. Yeah, and she trips a guy down the stairs to help him out. Um, yeah, and that is the last we see of her. Yep, yeah, I hope you weren't attached to that character, everybody. Have you enjoyed mm -hmm. Strawberry Fields? Meaningful character added a lot to the film. R.I.P. Absolutely. <clears throat> so, so, so Bond. We're losing all the greats this this movie. <sighs> Mitchell, Mitchell Strawberry Fields. Fields. Yeah. So, so Bond Mathis. gets pulled over, and that's exactly what happens. They tell him open the trunk, and he's like, "Then why would you want me to do that?" Opens the trunk, and there's Mathis in there. I'm not sure if he's like been he's unconscious. Yeah, he's just unconscious. Um. So the cops try to kill them both, and Bond uses Mathis as a human shield. Yeah, the impression is that it's like a human shield. I think it's supposed to look accidental, but he's just like picking him up, and they draw their guns, and he turns around in time. But it mm. does, like, it gives the effect of, whoop, he's this guy as a shield. <laughs> and then he gets shot twice, and he goes, oh no, Mathis! <laughs> Obviously, he he kills the cops, and then he like sits in the road and has a very touching scene with Mathis. Yeah, that's a so nice. good. Mathis, <laughs> is, Mathis, is, Mathis is trying to like rescue him from his nihilism. He's like, you you have to forgive Vesper and you have to forgive yourself. Um, it's also really interesting that the most touching physical intimacy we see in this film is between two men. It's this scene yeah. between when Craig is like holding. Mathis. I mean, he like kisses, you know, like fields a little bit upper back and it's like sexy. But the actual like intimacy and human connection is between two men. It's between Bond and Mathis. And this scene is really touching. Hmm. Absolutely. You and then Bond and then Bond rituals. dumps his body in a trash can. Yeah, in a skip. In a skip. Yeah, they put his body in a skip and <laughs> takes his money and, and fucking Camilla's like, e what? <laughs> and he's like, he wouldn't care. Don't worry. Which is probably no, I true. I really but like still. that. Yeah, it's yeah. true. No, like, it I, I really like this because Camille's like, is this how you treat your friends? Like, you just dumped his body in a skip. And Bond says, on the verge of tears, he's like, he wouldn't care. Like, it's, mm. it's. Honestly, beautiful. It reminds me really a bit like of Ronan, actually, of this yes. like of this yes. way in which spies sort of like make a fetish of like their own callousness, and within that, they sort of conceal quite a lot of very deep feelings. Yeah. Almost it's a good like, film. Puts, it's a good film. Puts him almost. in the skip, delivers that line, and then almost like double down on it, goes back to him and takes his wallet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, having had this good scene, the movie has to, like, uh, shit all over it again. Absolutely. So th they have to go to the, the, like, empty quarter, the desert, which uh, Dominic Green is buying. And they do this through a medium of what I've written down here is oh, silly fuck, about airplane this. bullshit. Uh, it was there's, shit. <laughs> there's one good thing about this, and this is Bond's cynicism, because he buys a plane off of a guy. Uh, and he's like, 
Uh, and Camille asks how much he wanted for it, and he says, well, he wanted you, but I gave him the car. He'll make more when he sells us out. And then mm. as they're, like, taking off the plane, you see the guy on the phone selling them out. And I appreciated that. I thought that was mm. good. I like a, yeah, I I like a cynical bond. It's nice that Craig is just like, yeah, no, this is going to happen, and I'm not mad about it. I knew it was mm. going to happen. <laughs> mm-hmm. Bond's plane gets ambushed by the, I guess, Air Force? Bolivian Air Force, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah they, they get shot down, but they escape by, like, tandem parachuting into a hole. Also, he's in the big plane from Lupin the Third, which I like. That's he true. Is. That's true. Zenigarth yeah. is there. Um, the guys in the yellow car are there. Uh-huh. Yeah, I, should, I should have rewatched Lupin the Third. <laughs> yeah. So at this point, we cut back so to London because M is in trouble with the foreign from, secretary. You're talking from about Tim Pickett Smith. Yes. Yes. Great actor. Yeah, that's right. And, <laughs> and we get some fantastic ideology because we we're alternating good scene, bad scene. And so the good <laughs> scene is um, M goes. Well, wait a second. But this this Dominic Green guy, he's 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 bad. And the foreign secretary just goes, "Say you're right. Say Green is a villain. If we refuse to do business with villains, we'd have almost no one to trade with." The world's running out of oil, M. The Russians aren't playing ball. The Americans and Chinese are dividing up what's left. Right or wrong doesn't come into it. When he when he walks in there as well, he has a great line, which is like, "I oh, am. Um, what's your excuse today? Is Bond legally blind?" <laughs> <laughs> but this is this is Tim Pickett Smith playing the foreign secretary, so he's playing Liz Truss. Yeah. So in in real life, he could be like, "I'm opening up new pork markets yeah. with Spectre," and 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 you can't be <laughs> also yeah. fuck trans women for no reason. <laughs> he just like yells yeah. that mid scene. Like, you you have to be a pragmatist was... about everything except trans women. Um. So yeah, no, this is. <laughs> Well, yeah, this is sort line, of like the, the the defense by necessity of an evil foreign policy is like w- again because it, it's a movie that's struggling with nihilism and it's a movie that loses. Pork markets are trans it's, women. That it's like mm, uh, is is that it's like we live in an evil world and therefore the best thing that we can do is try to like navigate it according to our own sort of pragmatic best interest. And there's no point in having like an ethical foreign policy because nobody else is ethical. So why should we be? Um, I I really like this. I really like hmm. that this film is making an effort to engage with the political context that has so far been like a millstone around the neck of the franchise. Sure. Yeah. It's it's more mati- like the fact that the movie ends up being subsumed by that kind of nihilism mm. is like that that's a failure. But I give it points for like engaging seriously yeah. and critically with it because M's M's response to this is like. Despite having been portrayed since Goldeneye as like this accountant, this bean counter, this pragmatist, she's like, well, okay, but actually, I think Bond is onto something, and I'm mm. gonna like let him continue to go off the books uh, tacitly. Like the foreign secretary tells her, you know, bring him in, or the Americans are gonna kill him, and she's like, oh yeah, sure, I'll, I'll totally do that. Mm-hmm. Um, so be- meanwhile, <laughs> back in the hole, um, Camille and Bond are like hanging out. They're Camille hole, looks. Yeah. Camille explains why she wants General Medrano dead. And the reason is, uh, her dad was in the military junta in Bolivia. General Medrano then, like, killed him, raped her mother and sister in front of her, and then burned the house down. Uh, And therefore, she's been out on, like, a quest for revenge ever since. And Bond, you know, empathizes with this. They have this sort of shared grief thing. Yeah, Bond has a genuine moment where he was like, oh, and when when I pulled you off the boat with him, and she's like... I've waited for that opportunity for years, and he's like, "Sorry." Mm-hmm. It's a like, really understands. nice scene. What Again, revenge. beautiful. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And she, she is a character who has a lot of like interiority, and who has her own yeah. motivations, and like is Shame like. couldn't do that with Fields, but yeah, yeah, which is why he doesn't have sex with her, right? Because he has sex with one woman, the disposable one, the eye yes. candy, the disposable one, and then mm-hmm. there's another woman that actually gets engaged with critically by the movie, and she gets to live and not yeah. even get yeah, yeah. fucked. Cool. It's normal. It's a great way to treat women. Mm-hmm. So the the they figure out that what's going on with this hole, right, is that the uh, quantum has been blasting dynamite in order to create uh, dams in order to uh, like dam off underground riverbeds to create an artificial drought, or as mm. as Bond memorably puts it, Dominic Green's going to suck this place dry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like it. Suck this place dry. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the, 
they can't just blow up this one dam and leave. They have to like actively stop him. And then when they walk out of the desert into the nearest town, we we see, and this is a great move, we see that the water shortage is causing suffering. Yeah, we see the actual people. Yeah, we see the consequences of the villain's plan. And I'm like, oh, brilliant. I can't believe we've not thought of this before. Yeah, and the fact that they're (laughs) like showing like (laughs) indigenous people also. Yeah, like they're all genuinely like indigenous Bolivian people, which is a good choice. Absolutely. Oh, there's, this isn't like a diamond company is going to lose some money. This is like a real human suffering. Hmm, absolutely. Um, so Bond and Bond and Camille walk back to their fancy hotel. Camille immediately just like, uh, you know, she, she waits downstairs and immediately leaves. Uh, Bond is sort of captured by MI6 and M does the most Cake having and eating it. I hate this. I hate this so much. Yeah. This whole scene is one of the M classics, which is where she's like, "Hang on, let me let me find my my notes because I was doing the yes." Uh, because the the, the, the classic here. where she mm. goes, "Bond, you're a piece of shit. Look what you've done. You've got another innocent woman killed. All right, now go get him, big boy. I love you." <laughs> yes. Yeah. Like, a little kiss you... on the cheek. <laughs> because what what has happened out. is that is that Fields, our second favorite character after Mitchell has been killed. And the way that she has been killed is that she has been drowned in crude oil on the like bed of the hotel room. And this is a very conscious uh, parallel to Goldfinger. And the thing mm-hmm. is, right, this is where I'm going to expound my theory about this movie. The things that make it almost a good movie are, even though it's by accident, the fact that Quantum is different from Spectre, right? Mm. The fact that Bond is different from previous Bonds. This is a movie that is one foot out of the, like, cell door of the fucking prison cell that is the Bond franchise's condemnation to, like, be repeating itself forever, mm. right? Mm-hmm. It's, it's almost inventive. It's almost new. It's almost something innovative. That's the thing that I cherish about it. And then this fucking death and this confrontation about it is the hand on the back of the collar yanking it right the fuck back to the same patterns of Connery bullshit that it's been stuck in since 1962. They should never have got the rights to Spectre back. I no. wish that guy had lived longer because it, it, the franchise would have gotten better if they hadn't. The, yes. the movie Spectre, I, I have some fucking thoughts and we'll get to it remarkably soon. Um, the thing about this this fucking movie is that I like Quantum. I like that Quantum is this different to Bond. If you look at the like description of this movie on Amazon, right? The this It's picking up an hour after the end of Casino Royale. Bond's journey leads him into conflict with the murky organization called Quantum, etc., etc., now, murky there feels like a choice because you would say mm. shadowy if you yeah. meant like a spectre like thing, but murky is right because you don't really understand what the fuck is going on, like what their deal is, what their goals are. They seem, and you said this in the group chat, Alice, like they're just a bunch of rich guys LARPing. Yeah, absolutely. That's good. That's a yeah. good take on yeah, a global it is. organization. It's, 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 what, it's what a sort of like a rich criminal would do having grown up watching Bond movies. Mm, it's like absolutely. people imitating Spectre, because Spectre is too silly to be real. Quantum isn't. Like, this idea that, like, rich people would be capable of having a conference call where they agree to do a coup, and they wear little fucking lapel pins, that it does nothing implausible about that. In the I've been invited to life. several meetings like that. <laughs> yeah, like, absolutely. I believe that that can and will and has happened. Like, yeah. absolutely. Genuinely. Absolutely. And yeah, no, it's 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 sort of a reprieve from from Bond silliness that will will not last into even the next movie. Yeah, no, um, God no. This is oh. like the high watermark for Craig Bond. For Craig, the fact Fingerside. that this film wasn't well reviewed critically, I think, is a real shame because if if this had been edited in a more coherent way and like had come out and done really well, that we could be in a different world. Another Absolutely. part of why this movie didn't get like reviewed particularly well is that it's short it's remarkably short for a bond film it's a hundred minutes like absolutely. and and that was a major point of contention with critics at the time yeah and, and, you, and you, like, you can tell sort of like there's there's a relationship to the quality of a movie but that we talk about based on how long it takes us like the pacing mm-hmm. for this one even with me trying to like 
move things along is still like we we might end up talking about this movie for like longer than this movie actually has you know lines in it. Mm, there's right. there's like I don't know. There's a lot to get into here, and there's more to talk about than there is just in the text presented to you, which is the sign of a good movie. Yeah. So. Bond yeah. has Bond Bond goes back to his his other other best friend Felix Leiter. It's not That's the right. same without Mitchell. Um, because he escapes, he gets arrested by MI6 and then he gets escaped. Yeah, and and, and of course we have the cake sort of, eating he, yeah, and he having gets arrested scene because... by MI6 and at M's orders, and then he escapes and meets up with M, and she's like, "All right, go on then." Yeah, she, she, luck. she just put like four guys in a lift with him in order to get them beaten up by James Bond, which mm -hmm. is, I don't know, that's probably M's not good. motivation is very strange. Sadly, that's he doesn't one major kick this time like he did in the, in the maggot one. <laughs> he should have done it. How could any of my bodyguards betray me, asks woman who regularly has them beaten <laughs> up by James Bond for no reason. I'm with Mitchell but, on this, actually. I'm starting to yeah. think. <laughs> there is a cute line earlier on where like, we do get a hint that M does have a special soft spot for Bond because um, he tells Camille, oh, Dominic tried to, he tried to kill somebody, a woman in my life. She's like, a girlfriend? He's like, no, no, your mother? No, but she likes to think she is. Mm. <laughs> it's, it's, quite, it's quite sweet. Which they, they do take some time to explore in the next movie, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so, so Felix uh, obviously is like expected by his boss Beam to betray Bond. Uh, so he agrees to a meeting, and then they have a nice little discussion. Uh, and Bond Bond expounds on some nihilism, and in another great line, right, Lighter pushes back on it, and this is a dialogue. You know, I was just wondering what South America would look like if nobody gave a damn about cocoa communism. It would impress me the way you boys would carve this place up. I'll take that as a compliment coming from a Brit. Just, th it's nice. It's good. It's a fucking throwaway like it's moment, and it's written. so good. <laughs> <laughs> Don't for, like okay. There may be people listening to this being like, "Hang on, I thought this was the podcast that hates James Bond." Listen, <laughs> we like a good movie. Like this has yeah. happened a few times. Genuinely, just like a good movie, we enjoy. Mm -hmm. uh, but don't worry, this won't stick around. <laughs> no, no, of course not. So enjoy this. We get so, one of these per Bond. <laughs> yes. So so Lighter then tells him everything he needs to know, which is the coup is going to go down after Dominic Green goes to this eco hotel in the desert called uh, La, uh, La Perla de las Dunas uh, and pays off the the chief of police and General Medrano. And then once they do that, they can move. Incidentally, there's a CIA death squad who's about to come and kill you, so you should run now. And they do some more parkour, <laughs> James Bond, fucking yeah, Michael Bay, born shit, in order to escape. Not important. Him and Camille, Bond and Camille, go to the desert, um, and they have another good interpersonal scene, because Camille mm -hmm. is like obsessively cleaning her pistol, because she's nervous about killing Medrano. And he he kind of like talks to her about revenge, and he says, you know, it's you only have one shot, so you like you make it count. But uh, you know, it's you know, you should you should trust yourself and your training, and it's it's good. Um, he doesn't do what Murbon does and says, oh well, if you try and take revenge, then you'll have an ungainly gait. Yeah. He just <laughs> he just takes it as read that she's going to seek revenge, and the he's Chinese like, here's advice same. on how to do it. Yes, yes, um, absolutely. God, so. Hmm. Both of them. Yeah, I mean, it would be particularly rich of, of Craig Bond and Larry Bond to be like, oh, yeah. you can't do revenge. Come now, dig mm. two graves. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so we see Madrano uh, with the chief of police. Madrano like orders a beer, and there's an attractive waitress, and you're like, ah, oh, they're gonna they're gonna rape her on screen to establish that he's a rapist. Something that we already said he was. Yeah, he's, they like, do. They do down. do that, and it it, it upsets cool. me because. Okay, all right. I, 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 I'm not one of these people who's like, you know, you should never depict rape in a, in a work of fiction. Sure. It can be a way to do that, and it sure. can even be a way to do that with a female character we're not massively invested in. What we did not need is a panty shot. No. And, no, that and was, it's in there. And it's like, in there. Yeah. It's in yeah. there. And I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. we didn't need that. It's an so, error. So, so, so Dominic Green is going to suck the, suck the country of Bolivia off, right? He, mm -hmm. he arrives mm -hmm. with uh, two cases. Gonna suck them dry. Yes, he arrives with two cases of money, one for the chief of police, one for the general. Pays off the chief of police, and then he reveals his like masterstroke to General Madrana, which is, uh, okay, all of that uh, that empty land you sold me, uh, that has all of your water under it. We're now your exclusive water provider, um, 
and you're going to pay us uh, some larcenous rate for it. Um, and General mm -hmm. Medrano refuses initially. And he, he, he pitches this to him as, listen, we, we don't give a shit. We work with the left and the right. If you don't sign it, you know, if, if you think that we won't kill you, then just shoot me now and like have a good night's sleep. But otherwise, um, you know, we're, we're just going to depose you in turn. Also during this, he says the phrase, Balls in your mouth. Just, just in case you, you, needed, you needed that. Sorry, I did, what was that? I, I missed so, that. It was balls in your mouth. Balls uh, right, in your right, mouth. Thank you. Balls in your mouth. Balls in your mouth. Um, so at this point, Bond and Camille attack. Also, we should mention the hotel is like fueled with like hydrogen fuel cells. Could have used solar panels. You are in the desert, but whatever. Because of e ecology, and like at one point, the chief of police literally goes like, "Oh, that's like a bomb, probably." Oh well. Um, as the I'm gonna stand all my men next to these red barrels. Absolutely, <laughs> I love to oh, chat in the God. red barrel room. We we record oh, every good. episode of this podcast in the red barrel. Room. <laughs> I've just got one behind me in the web. Absolutely, shop. <laughs> absolutely. We're in, we're in the red barrel room talking about our favorite passcodes, and um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so they attack, Just put an exclamation um, mark after it, it's fine. And, and, and Bond uh, sets off the hydrogen fuel cells with a stray shot. At this point, uh, Dominic Green activates sicko mode yeah, and just starts right? attacking Daniel Craig with a fire axe. And like, Daniel Craig is a foot taller than this man, but Green just like goes ape shit. Matthew on Mallory the activates like, you know, never pick yeah. on the quiet kid in the back of the class. Yeah, mode. It's actually like really good. He's screaming with every swing yeah. to get the also, power to do I, it. It's I, like should, I should point out, like, so, so Medrano is like in this room where he has taken this waitress in order to rape her, right? And then the building starts blowing up. Bond kills the chief of police in a really bizarre way where he lands on his car, has the time to say the complete sentence, you and I had a mutual friend, and then shoots him. Um, I like that he says it so fast, though. I think it's good. In a more you know, he would land and have yeah. the time to be like, oh, you and I had a mutual, <laughs> I had a mutual friend. friend. Pow, pow. Yeah. But with, with Craig, he's like, okay, I do need to get the line out, but I also need to shoot this guy ace up. So yeah, I need to, you I had a mutual friend. Bam. Get, get the line out <laughs> like, like I just landed on a car. Um, so <laughs> I had a mutual friend. Bow. <laughs> like it's, yeah. It does. <laughs> it so, sells so, me. I don't know. Yeah. I like yeah. it. So, 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 like, the hotel is now blowing up at this point. It's fully aflame. And I wrote down here Medrano is insanely committed to rape because. <laughs> right. He has not decided to leave at this point. He's just still in there trying to well, rape this waitress. The, the problem is that's it's okay the only though because he's identified as a woman. Mm. <laughs> Shut up, Jesus! <laughs> <laughs> the, I just the said problem mm, with there, is... like I didn't fucking yeah. understand what you said. Like, huh? It's it's again. It's like the last time when when Abby said that dolphins can sense pregnant women. Where you just go, huh? And then huh? two seconds later, like, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> hmm, interesting. The thing about Madrano is that they've forgotten to give him a character trait other than rapist so yes. far. So he just like that's all he can do. He's just defaulted I mean, to a medium. Like, the racial politics of this movie are certainly mm. not perfect, and one of the reasons not is that one of the antagonists is literally just Bueno Excelente. It <laughs> So, <laughs> excuse you. That's generalissimo, but you know, <laughs> I'll tell you, that man is the president of Bolivia. <laughs> so yeah, you're right. Yeah. So fucking Camille oh, no. breaks into the room. Oh, we get we get the panty shot of the rape victim for some reason. Camille ushers her out of the room into an exploding, burning hotel, and we never see her again. <laughs> yeah, best of luck out there. <laughs> yeah, good luck. Enjoy yourself. I, I think she still has her hands tied at this point. So, <laughs> yeah, she's going to have an interesting time. Um, And at this point, she... Oh, well. she we, we, we cut back to Bond and, and Matthew Malric fighting, and we hear a gunshot, right? Because he's trying to menace her. He's, he's like, having lost one rape victim, he then tries to move seamlessly onto another. Again, in a burning down hotel. In a burning. <laughs> How in a long does he think room. he's gonna last? Right, because like the the it we, we've got about two and a half minutes before the hotel explodes yeah. on, in the screen time. Absolutely. Like, how are you going to complete? Like, whatever, well, man. Fucking and, and anyway, bizarre characters, yeah, bizarre yeah, yeah. choice. So, well, we hear the gunshot, 
and uh, Green like taunts Bond by going like, ah, oh, looks like you lost another one because he assumes that uh, Madrana has killed her. But of course it's mm. the other way around. Bond axes Green through the foot. I feel like it, Green does it himself. Is oh, maybe. the thing? Yeah, you're He's right. Like he dodges out of the way. Swinging. Yeah, it, it's difficult to tell. Yeah, um, but he axes yeah. himself in the foot and then falls off. And Bond catches him by his hair and is oh. holding him by his hair, which I was like, oh Jesus Christ! Bond, Bond then just like ditches him to go and rescue Camille, um, mm-hmm. who is currently having a panic attack because Medrano like burned her house down with her inside, and so she's trapped in a burning room. Uh, and this is like her worst nightmare. And so, mm-hmm. as they get trapped in there, Bond considers like mercy killing her. Um, he walks in and he sucks her fingers Love- immediately. Yep, yep. Which is num, 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 num. This does Lovely not scene. make her feel better. Uh, she's like, I don't. She's like, I, they're cornered in the room, and she's like, I don't want to die like this. Like, and so he goes to shoot her, and then he sees there's a hydrogen fuel cell in the corner, and he shoots that instead and blows a hole in the wall. But it's it's genuinely quite a harrowing. Mm, yeah, absolutely. Like it's well, well done. done. Absolutely. Because again, it's like one good scene, one bad scene. This movie cannot stop flitting between a good deconstruction of Bond and then just doing Bond again. Like yeah. it's so all the dialogue scenes. Are, most of the dialogue scenes are great. And then, yeah. okay, second to last good scene to talk about oh because mm-hmm. uh, Bond then like uh, he 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 like sees Camille off. And then we get what I think may be the single sadistic thing, most sadistic thing we see Bond do in the entire franchise. Mm. He he takes Green out to the to the middle of the desert. He has already interrogated him. He's told him everything he like wants to know. Um, and then in revenge for Fields, a woman that he barely knows and never expresses any concern about, he's like, okay, well, I'm just gonna leave you here with a bottle of motor oil, and I bet you walk like twenty miles before you consider drinking that. Mm. And then he just leaves him And there's a scene later on that, that expresses That Green was found with two bullet wounds To the back of the head So he was, like, part of the line is that Your your guys know that yeah. you will have told the re- me everything the rest So of they'll Quantum. be looking for you yes. uh, but And also, it, they have found him But also I'm going to get revenge for you Drowning a woman oil by making you drink some um, Yeah mm-hmm. mm, Yeah, I don't know I, d- I don't like it <laughs> It's it, it's sort of but... yeah it, it's sort of portrayed and we'll, we'll come to this in the context of the last scene of the movie which is Bond goes to Kazan in Russia um because do you remember the Algerian love knot that Vespa I was getting do yes because of her boyfriend who was getting blackmailed as a sort of side note in this earlier M found out that like the boyfriend that she thought was dead was not in fact him at all, and she had mm. been catfished. I guess, specifically, she had been honey-trapped. And so, Bond waits for another couple, who are a Canadian spy, and the very same guy, the guy who has, like, catfished Vesper and is now catfishing her into, like, uh, you know, revealing information. Um, yeah, because Bond Bond waits in in their flat and then has hmm. them at gunpoint, and and he says, "Um, your Canadian intelligence, uh, you must be pretty high up." You're, if this what, man's you're one dating of the two you. Michaels, yeah. Yeah, you're <laughs> you're Michael, um, and this man is going to be quote unquote kidnapped, and you're going to be forced to betray Canadian intelligence in order to save his life. But it's all a lie, so you should go now. Um, and she kind of looks so heartbroken and gets up and just says thank you and leaves. Yeah, I like, and, like that. Great performance from that woman. Stana, One scene. Stana Katich. He genu- he points at her like love knot necklace and he's like, "It's a nice necklace. Did he get you that? A friend of mine had that." And like holds up Vespa's Vespa, love knot necklace, yes. an identical which is necklace, what yeah. sells her on it. And she yeah. goes up and goes, "Thank you and leaves." Which is like great performance from her. Like St- One Stana, line. St- Stana Katich is really good. She was even good in Castle, which is a dog shit show, but she she mm. carries that show anyway. Um, yeah, so. We are then led to believe that Bond is going to kill this guy, and because we've seen him torture uh, Dominic Green, you're you're kind of expecting like, ah, righteous fury. He's going to go like Liam Neeson on this guy. He's going to like eat his heart. He's going to like break his kneecaps. <laughs> he's going to do the. He's going to do Kaufman shit to him. He's going to get revenge for Mitchell. He's going to explore yeah. his like urethral chakra with the, this stop one. It. The guy <laughs> said. <laughs> the guy goes just looks at him, and he the only thing he says in that scene is just make it quick. And then it cuts to outside, and Bond leaves, and M's like, "Is he still alive?" And Bond goes, "Yes." And that's it. you're left to sort of wonder what's happened in there. Mm-hmm. You can sort of put together from context clues, but it's better to not. 
Yeah, and like, you, you kind of get the sense that, like, this is Bond, the closest you get to, like, Bond letting go. And he does literally yeah. let go of the fucking Algerian love knot necklace, just in case you were, you know, unclear on the symbolism there. Um, where he is, like, m he is still motivated by duty, but he's now sort of had that renewed. But you also get the sense that he's kind of, like, worked out his frustrations on green. Which is yeah, yeah. I don't know. Men will literally abandon a supervillain in the desert with a can of merch oil rather than go to therapy. <laughs> it happens. Absolutely. Well, then again, consider what a fucking bad therapist um, uh, the girl in Madeline No Swan. Time to Die is. Yeah. Oh, yes. if that's what, the, if, if that's what therapy is like in the Bond universe. All the therapists oh. that he talks to in fucking um, Skyfall. Yeah, no. Yeah, we'll therapy get is to that too. Th th <laughs> therapy, therapy is a is a dead end for Bond. No, he can only do torture. Um, yeah, um, I mean, yeah, yeah, same. Um, but uh, then we get that. <laughs> then it. we get the gun barrel opening. Um, and my notes say this is the moment he truly became James Bond. <laughs> That's I, right. I wrote That's and right. I never flagged it up. About five times through my notes, I wrote, "Damn, this guy can't even get a quantum of solace." <laughs> and I, I just, just like this is a terrible bit. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> well, like, what, what, what has happened here essentially is that Bond has filled the void that Vesper created with England, something which will cause him <laughs> no problems England, James. in future movies. And that's a that I I don't know. I think I think I said earlier it's a movie about like trying to escape nihilism that doesn't escape its own, but. In this case, like that that's that's the meaning that he finds. That's his fucking quantum of solace or whatever. Uh, and now we are prepared to go into some much worse movies. But James, I need you. So, so does, does the void. Do, Steps do, off the edge of a cliff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but James, I need you to pay child support. Just Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Immediately opens up S airstrike on my location now. Now <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, so we have a science-based system on this podcast. <laughs> I like the title of this we, movie. We, as well, we, we like call it know. we call it the Skume system uh, <laughs> for smart cultural insensitivity, nouncer intelligence, unprovoked <laughs> violence, and misogyny. Now, this movie. How smarmy would you say that it is? Because I don't think it's zero. I just think it gets away with it better. I think it's slightly. I mean, is it the same if the smarm is good? I think so. I th I think like because like all of the smarm when it is charming, like the you know we're teachers on sabbatical who have won the lottery. Like it's charming in a oh you fucking jammy mm. bastard sort yeah. of way. I think that counts. So but it's smarmy but in the does same way. Does it get as... points off for being sincere mm. at times? That's we have true. done that before. That's true. I that would say true. we pitch this at maybe like a three. I three would say teams. three unless we're doing points off for sincerity. Because mm, I think yeah, this I film think has more sincere moments in it than than any bit of the franchise before. I could do two then, I suppose. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, okay. I, I'm I could sold go on two. Two. Two, yeah, two, 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 two. Right. makes sense to me. Cultural, Cultural insensitivity. Well, bueno excelente. Um, <laughs> but That's not the worst it's been, but... Uh. It, doesn't, it doesn't do Haiti any justice either. Um, a lot of like, yeah. I mean, it, it could have been worse. Like, it could have been really worse. do the indigenous people of um, fucking Bolivia any. Well, none of them have like lines. Them just them there, like a, yeah. Well, they're not dancing around with are. plastic snakes. That's yeah, true. Yeah, that is true. That is true. But no, we can't, we like can't become like moral relativists here. We went into this knowing that this might happen to us. And yeah, we this might system is objective. Go, uh, we, we, you know, well, it's not as racist as the other bonds. Doesn't matter. Um, I I I think this could go to like a I don't know. I'm inclined to say two again. It's not that. Bad. I I I guess you can talk me down to a two. Yeah. Sure. All right. Yeah. Fine. Okay. Two. I'm I'm willing to. Largely, I'm a little bit invested in making this the best of the Craig movies because I believe that it is. Mm. Um, the, I, yeah, I, but I can't remember what we, we know that the, like, the, the, the quality of the movie does not bear any resemblance to the scum system. Yes. No, absolutely. Uh, Take a view to a kill, which is the best movie of all time. I, I find the computer indispensable. Uh, unprovoked <laughs> I really violence. Do tell you that. <laughs> unprovoked, unprovoked violence. violence. Uh, go for a fucking seven as a baseline. <laughs> this man cannot stop killing people. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I would like he's, he's to provoked. address 
point from the previous movie, which is that we kept excusing the unprovoked violence for being on the orders of the government, which mm -hmm. defeats the point which of the system Moore's entirely. Which was more excuse when I kill. It's, in the, it's on the explicit orders of my government. Absolutely. And those I kill are themselves killers. I hate Absolutely. that I have an encyclopedic knowledge of yeah, James Bond of, lines now. It becomes harder and harder for me to be like, yeah, oh, no, don't worry, I hate James Bond. I've just watched every movie and have a one hundred percent encyclopedic and have, knowledge. I have of recordings of several of the best lines. Um, I think it, it picks up a couple of points for leaving Dominic Green in the desert. I think. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I would go. But much of the rest, really? Mm. Yes. Much yeah. of the rest of it is like fights to the death. I think that's too high. Mm, no, the, you can't, the you like, can't bring me down low than a six. Way to be that he, like, you. Uh, you know, uh, watches the guy bleed out. The, the way that he kills Dominic Green. Nah, that, that wasn't unprovoked. That was a fight to the death. He got attacked <sighs> him with a knife. I suppose. Just because it's like realistically acknowledging the consequences of the violence doesn't make it unprovoked. Six. It's not reveling but in it. Same, but at the same time, he has been specifically asked not to. Like his mm -hmm. boss is disappointed when he does it. It's it's implied that he's going off piste to do additional violence that isn't particularly necessary. Mm. Like you didn't have to kill this guy. You can disarm him. I know you can fucking grapple a guy. Like yeah, well, like for no instance, way... he he like manhandles um he manhandles fucking Camille uh, in the boat chase and he doesn't kill her by accident. I think he's making the choice to kill. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Six, though. Six. Really? The Six. All right, I'm outvoted. I, I was going to go for another two, but all right. What? No. Ridiculous. <laughs> I, was, okay, I, I think the only unprovoked violence is what he does to Green, and the rest is arguably provoked. But mm. Misogyny. Um, I'm afraid it's going to be quite high. It's, yeah. Yeah, it is. Uh, R.I.P. for Fields, like, mm -hmm. yeah. and A woman rape just victim thrown away shot. by the fucking movie. Yeah, and then making it entirely about him... Uh, also, yeah, very true. Also, the rape, which is to me reflects like a lack of confidence in your own screenwriting to be yeah. like this guy who we've explicitly said is a rapist using another character's like interior sort of motivations. We now have to make that explicit because he just does that against yeah, all reason or self preservation. The character for whom that they use to be the rape victim in that scene as well is just dispatched, like disappears from the movie. She walks out into a burning hotel and they're like, that's that's the end of that chapter, closes the yeah. book. Like, mm -hmm. it's a it, woman as a prop again. Yeah. yeah. Express that this, this man is evil. Baseline it's, of five, do you want to go higher? I'd say I, I would be convincible for five, I think. Uh, only because I don't think it reaches the heady, heady heights of Connery. But then mm. I, I, I wonder if whether that's sort of me being relativist. Well, at least the rapist this time is the villain. Oh, that's true. Yeah, that's true. Five? Five. Um, yeah. That gives it a total score of 15, which is pretty good, actually, as far as Vons go. I can't remember what we gave Casino Royale last time because I wrote it down elsewhere, but... Uh, put it on the wiki, which we definitely should have. Yeah, um, it's it's yeah, pretty low as to, far as they go. Um, I do need to get all this data at the end. I'll start doing like some SPSS statistics, and we can mm, finally get so, to the so bottom of this. Doing doing bondometrics. Are we <laughs> award two little decorations on this podcast? We award the uh, well three, but I don't think the Kaufman Star is relevant here. Mm -mm. We, the Kaufman Star has nothing to. Add we to this one, I'm afraid. have the Good Night Cross for the least appreciated good character, and we have. The Kronstein Rosette for the most appreciated evil character. Well, the, yeah, it, the villain Mitchell who goes Fields above and Vega. beyond. Yes. Easy. Mitchell mm -hmm. for the Kaufman, Fields for the Good Night. Not the Kaufman, Kronstein. the Kronstein. The uh, Kronstein, yes, yeah, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I think we've got it. We, yeah, I agree with that, yeah. Mitch, Mitchell and Fields. Yeah, <laughs> Mitchell absolutely. Because the thing about Fields, Fields, like, M has a line that's just like, wh why? And Bond's just like, well, you know, I had to, I had to go. No, she's like, and he's like, no, 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 no. Why her? She was a desk jockey, man. Mm. I just sent her out to turn you away at the airport. How is she dead? Yeah. He's like, well, I had an erection. Mm -hmm. The lo-fi Bond theme started playing. What am I meant to yeah, not bone like down? She was, like, there was pussy there. It wasn't Absolutely. made of sand. Absolutely. Well, this has been the best of the Craig years. And after this, Daniel Craig starts... the best of Craig's. Starts... It was the worst of Craig's. That's true. That's true. And after this, Craig starts hating Bond as well he might, and as we all did too. Sorry, that's my note to say that the recording has now been going on for the length of the movie Quantum of Solace. <laughs> <laughs> Equal time. Perfect time to Equal wrap it up. Equal time.
Thank you for joining us. I have been Alice Caldwell Kelly. I have been Alice joined Caldwell by Alice Kelly. As good as you can. Uh, that is. Uh, yes, this has been yeah, Quantum of Solis. Uh, I have been Alice Caldwell Kelly. I have been joined by Devon and Abigail Thorne. Hey, and yeah. we will be returning for... What is the next one? It's uh, Skyfall. Skyfall, right? baby. Skyfall. This is the one that everyone says is the best Craig. Um, yeah. And I'm excited to disagree. Whether Absolutely. that will be in, uh, well, exactly when that will be is not sure because I have to go and do something next week. You have to go uh, and do some normal, normal things. Some yeah, normal we gave things. you Quantum of Solace with no fake outs because, um, yeah, I have you to go and do it, a thing that might make it difficult to record. Absolutely, um, absolutely. So, so we'll with, Alice, with... Yeah, yeah, Abigail has to go topple another <laughs> South American. Thank you for listening to yet another episode of Kill James Bond. This is probably the kindest we've been to a movie since License to Kill. And this is an actual Bond movie. That one was just sort of a movie starring a guy called James Bond. Kill James Bond will return in two weeks' time for Skyfall. Maybe. Uh, unless something comes up. But if that is simply too long for you to wait, and you have an interest in becoming parasocially friends with us, uh, you can head on over to patreon.com slash killjamesbond, all one word, uh, where next week we're going to be uploading Q&A 4, uh, where we laughed harder than we have in any other episode we've ever recorded, even more so than the previous bonus episode Spike It's 3D, starring Demi Lardner and Tom Walker. An episode in which I got this clip of Abby. No, I'm going to fucking kill that cunt. Which is one of my favorite clips of her I've ever heard in my fucking life. Um, anyway, I've got a lot of fucking names to get through, so let's just kind of get on with this. 15 pounds and above patrons. Forks Winchester, Paint McCarla, Jack Holmes, George Rohack, Thomas Oberhart, British Pterodactyl, Sol, Nikki, Phil West Music, Carolyn Tankersley, Benno Rice, Rain, Max Kapinski, Kit Divine, Amanda Rogda, Max Gaiman Hart, Sidney Steckel, Dread Pirate Robin, Jay Martindale, Hell Blood Hands, someone whose name I don't read out anymore because they've displeased me. No, I'm gonna fucking kill that cunt. Jack Bushel, Tarp O, Field Commissar Jen Jen, Mothman, Big Titty Goth Girl, Timothy Pajorni, Trip, Kentucky Fried Commie, Charlie in the Closet, Zoe Shepard, Elizabeth Cox, Thin Ross, Alfredo, Avery Darling, Philippa Smith, Wolfie, Rayle Leal, Richard Drum, Al Irwin, David Wickramaratna, James Natman, Millie, Robbie Morgan, Josh Simmons, Penny Banks, and Bon LeBon. Thank you each. Thank you very much, all of you. You've made my life immeasurably better. Kill James Bond, as always, uh, is Alice, Abigail, and Devon. Our producer is the wonderful Neighbor Thay, back at it again. Our podcast art is by Maddie Lubchensky, and our website is by Tom Allen. See ya.